Hello, one and all. Welcome to episode four of Talking Comics with yours truly, Julius Freeman. Tonight's episode is called the short, short version, where I explore the new medium or the new platform that was popping up uh, and essentially threatened the comic book industry in a way that people didn't imagine. That is the digital platform, online platform, online comics. That's the uh, the route I decided to take after my uh, venture with uh, Kim Jacinto and Studio for Hire. And uh, so if you recall in the v previous video, I worked with Kim Jacinto on the Ghetto Dragon and I felt that this version of the Ghetto Dragon would have got me into Image Comics if it weren't for the owner of Studio for Hire inadvertently ending that dream when he stole the money paid to his studio. Um, that experience kind of left a bad taste in my mouth so I decided to scale back a bit because it was apparent that producing blind submissions was an expensive and time-consuming venture that I could no longer afford to do at the time. So I attempted to find another way into the comics industry and I thought maybe if I produce short story comics um, that I would release online for free on a digital platform that would get me noticed by editors within the industry to hire me for for work for hire stuff. That was my assumption. Uh, but the idea was to produce five to eight page stories all drawn by different up and coming artists and release these chapters of the Ghetto Dragon for free online and promote the shit out of them so that the name or the Julius Freeman brand would rise up the ranks in the minds of the comic book readership. It didn't work out that way because, as I mentioned, it's very expensive to produce short story comics. And considering the fact that there was no money in digital comics, there was no way for me to get some of that money back. Remember, this is days before Patreon, days before, you know, uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter. So there's no way for me to generate revenue for the stuff that I produced to release online for free. So uh, at some point when I realized that I was just spending way too much money to produce these pages, I decided to pull the plug um, because, like I said, it was it was taking too much money from resources that I could have used to produce material that could generate revenue, if that makes sense. So this was one of the other many mistakes that I made in my 10-year journey of becoming a professional comics writer and creator. So I hope that this video shows you the hard work that went into producing these small uh, short stories. Um, some of them are pretty good. I was looking through them today and I thought, you know what, some of these still are pretty good if I had just finished, if I had just finished them and followed through um, to the end. But since I didn't follow through, they're mostly incomplete. But here for the first time, you'll be able to see the other uh, interpretations of the Ghetto Dragon drawn by other various artists that I met either online uh, locally in comic book stores or through friends. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright guys, so here we have the first chapter of the shorts that I was going to produce for um, a digital platform that didn't end up working out. But this first artist that you see here in the screen, uh, his name is Arturo Morales otherwise known as Maya Zero, which was his comic book name moniker. Arturo and I uh, met at a comic book store, actually. It was my first comic book store that I ever went to. It was called Cosmic Comics. He was an employee there. And I was this young kid, maybe 14 years old, who was starting you know, to get really into comics. And he was the one that pointed me at the right direction in terms of which books to get and whatnot. And then after that store closed down, a few years went after, and then uh, we saw each other at a at a uh, Borders bookstore. If if you guys don't remember Borders bookstore, it was a it was a chain that closed down. I think I forget what year, but he kind of saw me, and I and he saw and I saw him, and we kind of like, hey, I recognize you, and yeah, I recognize you too. Did you go to you know, the Cosmic Comics? Yeah, and then after that, that's when it all started, and. He was really into comics, and he was a, an artist. He showed me his work in his sketchbook, and as the years progressed, 
I finally asked him, hey, are you interested in working on something? You know, because I want to, I want to produce comics, and you it looks like you want to produce comics, so we gave it a shot, and um, it was uh, interesting to say the least, because uh, there was definitely a, a, not a style, not a clash style, a clash of styles, I should say. It was more of a, a lack of understanding, on my part, not not. Arturo's, because uh, Arturo or Maya Zero, I'm going to call him Maya Zero to just be, you know, consistent. Maya Zero had a few years on me in terms of understanding comic book storytelling. I was new to the game, so I was still learning. And so I was studying, you know, Alan Moore and, and uh, you know, uh, Stan Lee, very old masters that just kept things safe, except for Alan Moore, obviously. But Arturo came from the school of like Joe Mad, Jim Lee, um, uh, what's his name, the other guy, Rob Liefeld, uh, Tom McFarlane. So he was in a whole different level uh, and a different uh, mindset in terms of what comic book storytelling should be. So there was always that clash because I would always try to, to uh, you know, write a certain script a certain way. And he would say, oh, he would always say like, why? Why do you want to do it like that? Why not try this? He was very open-minded when they come, when they came to uh, uh, the comic book medium, and as you can see in this first panel, this is the first panel right here. This hand, this close-up of a hand. When I first wrote, wrote the script for this for this uh, page, I simply put pa you know panel one, close-up of a hand reading the mess a text message on her phone on her flip phone. This is before touchscreen, guys. So this is a while back, and I imagine it to be a uh, he was gonna draw a, a rectangular panel. Uh, I think it's vertical. I want to say. And he didn't do that. He did this instead. And at first, I didn't like it because I was a very controlling writer. Um, not so much now, but back then I was very like, no, 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 do it this way, do it this way. And he was the one that that taught me, you can't, you can't treat artists like lap dogs. You gotta let them be. You gotta let them try things out, and then if if you don't like it, then you tell them after the fact and they'll try to, you know, meet you halfway. His philosophy was, let's open it up. Let's try things out. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, experiment. I mean, if you look at these panels, I mean, these panels look, they're very animated. You know, he, he showed you everything and told you nothing. It's like, that's the kind of approach I like. You know, this girl's face right here, she's upset. She's upset because she has to walk home from school and she knows that she's walking through a pretty terrible part of of town and if we scroll down you know she's she walks by and she sees that she knows she knows what's coming and here you go these two uh gangsters and they stop her and they start harassing her and our hero over here across the street sees what's going on holding his grocery bags and he calls out hey and i mean look at this look, look how look how much story he impacted in the panel if you look at every single one of these characters they're all doing something Something is happening in the panel. Because, look, this guy over here, he's pounding his fist. He has his, he's ready to throw down. This guy is kind of has a smirk, like, oh, and he's flipping them off. Like, oh, this guy thinks he, you know, what's he going to, what's this little puny guy going to do? And then this guy, he's, he's mad. And then she's still trying to fight them off. And then, you know, our hero's just standing still. He's standing firm. He's saying, hey, leave, leave this girl alone. Can't you see she's scared? And then they, surre they, they confront him. Says, who do you think you are? And of course, our hero says, "Hey, you know, what if this little girl was your mother or your sister, or your girlfriend? Would you appreciate someone, you know, treating her that way?" And of course, they take offense to it, and they want they they're going to make an example out of this guy. But our hero just straight up goes to work and just attacks him. Doesn't stop. Doesn't hold back. Kicks the, kicks the first guy in the chest. Guy goes down. Second guy, look at this punch. That's a freaking devastating punch. And again. Arturo, or I'm sorry, Maya Zero, although his style was was not to my liking, I got to give it to him, man. He just understood what comic book art should be. And, and during this stage of the game, I was very arrogant and I was very ignorant of the craft. So I was a, I was con I was a control freak. I wanted to control everything. And he was more like, dude, let it go. Like, let just let it happen naturally. And, you know, in hindsight, 
yeah, I should have just let him, I should have just taken his advice and just let him do it because, I mean, these panels, I look at them now and I'm like, you know what, this, this story can still work today. It can still hold, it holds up. You know, so our hero, going back to the story, our hero kicks our, our, our one of the villains in the wrist, breaks his wrist, clocks him in the face with his elbow, and he jumps on top of this guy, the guy who's down here. See, he's, he's down here, so he jumps on top of this guy. And this guy's like, what the hell? And then, boom, kicks him. Great ending. Again, his his face, look at his face. This face, and this face, and this, what's going on? Something is always happening in every panel. If you're a comic book artist, take note. Because look at this, look how lively these pages are. It's just unbelievable. It's so good. It's so well done. And the colors just make it pop. And, of course, you know, he beats the three guys picks up his groceries, the girl is grateful, he winks at her, and then we move on to the next part of the story, which is a few days after the beatdown, we're outside a house in the garage, door is slightly open, there's smoke coming out, we zoom in, and then we find out it's the three guys who got beat up by our hero, Matt, the ghetto dragon. And they're telling the leader of the gang what's going on, but in this scene, they're lying to him. They're essentially telling him that the guy who beat them up is a new guy in town who wants to take over the territory. You know, this guy goes like, hey, hold up. I think I know who you're talking about. Young kid with yellow Bruce Lee shoes. And, of course, that's the fucker. And he goes, huh, he doesn't look like a thug to me. Kind of like, he doesn't, look that, he doesn't look like a gangster to me. A rookie mistake on my part as a writer, I reveal his face here. And so I should have got rid of these two panels, extended these out, you know, make them wide wide uh, panel so that way it's a it's a nice wide shot and then end it with this last panel where he you know he says oh you know we gotta we gotta send a message to him and say hey you know we'll we'll send casper we'll get casper to teach him a lesson of course casper's like oh the gringo huh so we i could have ended it with this page this would have been a better ending to the page to the not the page to the story and as you can see it's called no good deed goes unpunished and so this essentially was the seed to what has become the Ghetto Dragon No Good Deed book one that will be launching on Indiegogo in a couple of weeks. So this was the, I guess, the precursor to that. And, you know, again, a great image. Look at this cool freaking splash. Just awesome all around. And at the time, I was so spoiled. I was so, I guess... I wanted top quality work that I thought this wasn't good. I actually thought at the time that this artwork was not good, that it was not good enough. But looking at it now and I'm, you know, I'm thinking like, man, this was actually really good stuff. All of it, all the way through. So yeah, this was the pages for uh, Maya Zero. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the, of the, the pages and if the Indiegogo campaign is successful, I could add these pages as a bonus if you help me meet a certain goal. So hopefully if that's, the, if that's something that, that um, interests you, you know, leave a comment, let me know. And if that's the case, I'll definitely add these pages to the campaign. So moving on to the next one, the next chapter of this short story saga. So here are McKinley's pages. McKinley was an artist I met through Maya Zero, a.k.a. Arturo. He told me about his friend, uh, McKinley, who was also a talented artist. And he also told me since it's a short chapter, he'll more than likely do it. So I said, okay, well, you know, hit him up. Let him know that I'm looking for artists and let him know that's paid work. That's another key factor, guys. I paid the artist for the work. And so he's like, okay, yeah, well, he's actually flying down from Texas to California and if you want we could I could set up a day where we can meet up and you could pitch him what you're looking for so I was like great so we met up at a coffee bean uh, met the guy very cool dude very down to earth extremely funny quick witted just quick witted and he was just like just on it man like the whole time we were talking he just had me in stitches just just one after the other one he was just knocking them out of the park just boom boom joke after joke after joke and you know he went on about how he loved how he got into anime and into comics 
and then eventually it came down to okay well what's it what is it that you want to you want to do and so i told him well i'm looking for different artists to draw for the ghetto dragon you know i want to have my name out there i want to get my name out there and um you know he went for it he was like all right man let's do it how many pages well, only eight pages okay cool let's do it so these are the four pages that he drew um he didn't draw the rest of it because um well, I get to the, I'll get to it when uh, when I get to the pages. So let's just start with the pages that I have now. And again, you know, McKinley just this was all him. I wrote a script where it says he's jogging, he he passes by an alley, stops, sees what's going on, sprints towards the gangsters. It ends with the gangsters looking at 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 our hero going, "Oh shit, this guy's going fast." And this is what he gave me. All in one shot, no editing, one shot. And I remember when I got these pages, I was like, damn, man, this guy can really fucking draw. I wonder why he's not working for the big two or some some freaking publisher. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But, yeah, this was the page, the first page. And then we get to the second page. Bam. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you'll notice this image that is in my uh, header on my Twitter page. This is a great image. I love this image. It's one of my favorite uh, because it encapsulates everything I love about the Ghetto Dragon in one panel. And on top of that, again, McKinley just had a gift of storytelling ability. He just understood it. He just got it. And he, again, he hit it out of the park. You know, I, I gave him the script. He read it. And this is what he gave me. So our hero kicks the first guy. Second guy is surprised. And then he the second guy pulls out a knife to get to work, but our hero's too fast. And both knocks him out in the chin and breaks his arm. And then gives him another KO kick just to be 100% sure. And look, look at this freaking motion. Everything is used. Everything is in motion. All the facial expressions are in work. Nothing is wasted. Nothing. And I love that. I absolutely love that in comic books. And this guy was giving it all 100% did not hold back at all and the third page our hero helps the victim but our victim again you know you can he see here that he is probably not as innocent as you thought and he slaps our hero runs away rotate on this puta <laughs> i like that line and troopers for life homie and he runs away and our hero is kind of left wondering what the hell was that all about and then he quickly realizes that he was set up by the gang so this guy comes out with a machete, it looks like, or a bat. can't really tell. Um, this guy comes out with a pipe, a shiv, uh, another pipe, and chains. And he's surrounded. Oh, it's a bat. I can see here. So yeah, he's surrounded here. And we end it with... The ca this is Casper, by the way, that it's mentioned in the, in the first chapter. And that's it. That's the end of the story. It was supposed to be eight pages total, I, I believe so. No, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be ten pages total, five pages of, of a fight scene, four pages of a fight scene. The last page being the ending of the of the chapter. Uh, the reason why McKinley didn't finish these this chapter is because in the second half, I actually gave him edits. So he gave me the layout via email I don't have those images anymore because my old computer hard drive crash and they're they're lost and um, he gave me the layouts and I wasn't quite happy with what he gave me so I edited the pages I kind of moved you know a few panels here I made sure to change an angle there not too much but it was enough for him to say oh you know what screw this and he didn't he didn't finish it and so one day I asked Arturo, I said, hey, how come your friend didn't, uh, you know, follow through? And he says, because you edited his work and he's the type of guy who is, has the mentality, if you don't like my work, don't hire me. It's, it's as simple as that. You get, you get what I give you. That was his outlook on, on comic book production. Again, at the time, I was still very controlling I was still very like my way or the highway type of deal this is my baby you do what I say and he didn't like that because he was also in the same mindset as Arturo aka Maya Zero which is let it go let it go 
let the artist find his own voice let him find his own expression to complement your story and at the time I did I wasn't ready yet to do that I was still holding on for dear life because I didn't want anyone messing up my creation but yeah so the pages overall were great I still love them I mean they still this could still be a comic book today if this was on the shelves I have no doubt in my mind that readers would pick this up look at the pages and go holy shit this is fucking good this is really good and buy it no doubt about it but yeah these are the pages from McKinley again great work all around I just wish um, he would have contacted me and explained to me why he didn't finish the pages because then it, if that was the case I would have worked with him I would have uh, met him on the middle ground you know and in in find common ground so that way we could help each other out and I could have had a complete uh, story but it didn't happen and that led to me having to start all over again because I didn't want to redo these pages because they're, they're still good. I still love them. But I had no choice but to start all over again. And I started all over again with um, Afu Chan. Um, the first time I saw Afu Chan's work was about 10 years ago on uh, DeviantArt.com. I was just scrolling, you know, through looking for artists to, you know, work with. And I saw some. I saw his. Uh, it was a piece. I think it was a piece for video game. I forget the name of the video game. I think it was. I want to say Street Fighter, but I don't know. I'm not sure. But anyway, his colors, his style. I was like, dude, this, this is the Ghetto Dragon. This guy, is the perfect Ghetto Dragon artist. In the same way that Dave Gibbons was the perfect Watchmen artist. In the same way that. Uh, you know, Jim Lee was the perfect X-Men artist. That's how I felt when I saw his artwork. It was like, this artist need to draw the Ghetto Dragon. It would be perfect. And as you can see on these pages, let me zoom in here so you guys can get a closer look at, at these beautiful looking pages. What more can you ask for? Here's the bot that old man. In Orange County... There are uh, ice cream men who push carts like this all day long, and they are mainly Mexican immigrants who do it. And so it's a staple of my childhood. I've met many what they call palatero men, palateros in Spanish, but in English they're ice cream men. Uh, I've met many great people, very gentle souls in my years growing up in a city where this was a norm. So anyways, we start the story with uh, a palatero sleeping by a tree, and he wakes up and he realizes he's late going back to the station to turn in his cart full of ice cream. And so as he's hurrying down the street, he walks by a pretty bad part of the neighborhood. And these trooper gangsters see him and they call him out, a palatero. So let me zoom out here and let me go to the next page. And so these guys start harassing our palatero. And again, look, I mean, just look at these freaking panels. I can't sing enough praises for Afu Chan and I hope to one day work with Afu Chan I don't think he's interested in working with me anymore because I've hounded him for years to draw this uh, this comic and he was interested for a while but then he went on to uh, he got that gig on, at um, I think it was Boom Studios he did Hello Jen and then after that that's when he he jumped on uh, a few Marvel books and then he he got on the the, uh, the John Layman book I can't remember the name of the book can't believe I can't remember it. But yeah, anyway, so they start harassing him. They take his money. They punch him in the stomach. And they're pretty much saying they're going to take everything from him. They don't give a shit. And then our hero comes out of nowhere. And he saves the day like he's supposed to be. Like he's supposed to, I should say. And so it kicks the first guy in the face. He's ready for the next guys. Knocks this one out. One, two punch. Then he gets the third guy in the sec in the third page who's coming at him, who's charging at him with the knife. And of course the cool this is a cool angle here, a very cool shot. And then he does the one two kick. Knocks kicks the knife off the guy's hand and then kicks him in the face. And our palatero gets up and he realizes like, Oh crap, 
you know, my hero, right? And so our uh, our hero, Matt Guetta, picks him up, tells him we need to get the hell out of here before reinforcements reinforcements come. And then our hero walks our Palatero to the station and he gives him back his money. And it turns out that Matt gave him an extra $100 on top of the money he made to keep. And our Palatero is thankful for it. And it ends with our hero running away to live another day. And, like, you know, again, this Apuchan, like I said, is the ideal artist for the Ghetto Dragon. And I hope one day down the line, God willing, I, I work with them on the Ghetto Dragon. I hope you guys come back next week. I will show you the, the other half of the video. There's another sh uh, short story. But this one is 15 pages long and is drawn by an artist named Will Robson. And I'll show you another chapter drawn by a friend of mine named Jose. But yeah, so in conclusion to this video, The Ghetto Dragon No Good D Book 1 is a 10-year journey. It's, I mean, as you saw in this video and the previous videos, this is my fourth or fifth version of The Ghetto Dragon. And you guys... All of you guys out there who may be watching this at the moment are seeing the Ghetto Dragon, you know, Indiegogo, and you may think, oh, this guy's first campaign, this must be his first comic book. No, it's, it's, this is 10 years in the making, guys. You know, looking at these pages, preparing these videos have put everything in hindsight, everything in 2020, no pun intended. And I'm starting to realize, like, man, I really spent 10 years of my life trying to make this, trying to make this happen. And I hope it shows. I really do. So, again, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Be excellent to each other. Stay safe. And peace be with you. Good night. Welcome to the pre-launch of The Ghetto Dragon, Book 1, No Good Deed, a 60-plus page story about a young man named Matt Guerra, who saves an underage girl from being kidnapped by a heartless, gruesome gang named Los Valientes, who will stop at nothing to protect their street cred. Follow Matt as he pays the consequences of his good deed with his fists, causing Los Valientes to turn their sights on his family. Does our hero back down, or does he stand his ground? Join us in this martial arts adventure that involves action, drama, a little romance and tragedy. Follow Julius Freeman on Twitter and Facebook for the latest updates. Also, check out his YouTube channel and subscribe where you can join him in exploring the rich history behind the creation of the Ghetto Dragon. Sign up to the pre-launch today where you will have first dibs of receiving your book. Help make it happen for the Ghetto Dragon. Book 1. No Good Deed. You won't regret it.